gathered the church in the church house. We understand and we realize that our freedoms that you have graciously provided for us are under satanic attack. We are grateful that you have provided for us this opportunity to gather the church in the church house. In word, thought, and deed, Father, we ask that this service tonight would be to your honor and to your glory. We ask that your presence might be known and felt. That God, the Holy Spirit, will clear our hearts and our minds and open, open us to your word that you would enable us to continue to grow in grace and in the full knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that he might be honored and glorified. And all of us together say, Amen. 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 I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. We, we started revival on Wednesday, and it has been a uh, joy each and every night, and that same joy will continue tonight on into Sunday. I, uh, I'm glad to have the brother here. And I'm greatly, doubly glad to have all of you here tonight. Uh, before he takes the pulpit, I think we're going to have some special music. Are you ready for special music? Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is Leah, and Leah is going to grace, grace us with playing the violin. And I'm not sure whether she's going to fiddle or violin. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we will find out. <laughs> yeah. and, and you have music to sing along. Mm -hmm. uh, the first song we're starting with is All Things Bright and Beautiful. Yes. Uh -huh. And we have a singer, John, who will be leading us. <laughs> uh, some of you know my wife has passed away, and uh, so sometime last summer, a lady and her mom came over and, and said, uh, we're neighbors, can we help? And uh, so my wife was very musical, and uh, Aaliyah has been part of my processing grief. I don't, I don't know that I ever finished processing, but, I, but I'm further along. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this, we're going to sing these songs in an old man's rhythm, 
slower than the right one. But that's but she's intolerant of that. Too. Careful how you say old man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> but, but when you when you hear her music, uh, I hear my wife saying, very good. So, uh, Leah, we go one, two, three, four. This is all things bright and beautiful. We better say that. So you have the word. Okay, one, two, three, four. All
virtuoso with cello. Uh, his mother, who has a shop right next to us also, a spring shop, it says that he has a full pass now to Carnegie Mellon mm -hmm. Music Scholarship. Yeah, that's quite remarkable. Mm -hmm. It is well with my soul. One, two, three, four. When
said he hoped you guys were comfortable. Don't get comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't getting comfortable. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit about pride and humility today. Amen. Talk about those things because we all have it. We get picky at it sometimes. We tend to forget that God wants us to be humble and let, let him take the lead. It's hard to do sometimes, <clears throat> mm -hmm. but we're going to talk about it a little bit. My Bible has fallen apart. Mm -hmm. I've used it at least. <laughs> That's, a That's a good thing. That's a good thing. All right. A little bit of background about humility, pride. If you remember way back in Exodus, when Moses went to Pharaoh, he told Pharaoh that when we use Bow down and humble yourself and set my people free. Mm -hmm. Moses asking that question. If you go a little farther and you come up to the time of Saul and Samuel, Samuel told Saul that, and Samuel said, and this is Samuel 15, 17, when the words, when thou was little in thy own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribe of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee to be king over Israel. Mm -hmm. Samuel reminded Saul that when he was little in his own sight, how often do we remind ourselves that we are little <laughs> in God's eyes? How often do we stop and take the time to remember when we were down? When you're on top of the world and everything is going good, it is extremely hard to think and humble yourself mm -hmm. because you're living in the moment. We're going to look at a few verses about humility. And we're going to talk about it a little bit. I usually preach out of King James, but I got some verses out of the NIV because they're easier to understand. Proverbs 11, verse 2 says, When pride cometh, then cometh disgrace, but with the humble comes wisdom. Our pride replaces our ability to understand. Our pride takes away that quietness that we can absorb the things around us. Our pride sets us in a place where I cannot hear you, my brother, when you're talking to me, because I already have the answer. You cannot put anything in a full cup. It just simply runs over the side. But when we humble ourselves before God, when we take the time to make ourselves little, as Samuel told Saul, make ourselves little in our own eyes, God is strong. Mm -hmm. Still in Proverbs, Proverbs 22, verse 4. The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor in life. If we can set ourselves to obey and listen and receive the word of God, if we can take those words and put them into action in our life, we can set ourselves in a position where God can bless us. He cannot bless us in our pride. He cannot lead us in our pride. He cannot teach us in our pride. But when we humble ourselves before God and man, it seems like you see a whole different world around you. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit of a life story before I go any farther. I grew up in the Deep South. I grew up in the Deep South where racism ran rapid. It was on every corner. My mom was Native American. My dad was black. I didn't fit into any worlds. I can still remember the things that took place. I can still remember being spit on at nine years old by grown men. I can remember my mom crying, 
telling me not to tell her that my dad because he would kill those men and go to jail for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. That is what that's the world I grew up in. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Because I grew up in that world. God helped me to become a better man. Mm -hmm. I can remember as I grew up. I'm a Roman. So don't don't get worried, I'm not gonna reach out and touch. <laughs> <laughs> all right? And I may do that too. But that's alright. God God is amazing if you let him work in your life. I grew up as an angry young man. <clears throat> My mom and dad did not teach me that. It was simply the environment in which I grew up in. My grandfather used to tell me that you are descendants of kings and warriors. Never be afraid of anything. He taught us to be strong. Mm -hmm. To fear nothing. But my strength and understanding of that made me even more angry. How could I be a descendant of kings and warriors and be treated like nothing at all? Mm -hmm. Because of that, I got to the point I became a brawler. And all of us have our own past. We have that dark side. Mm -hmm. I would fight it for drop of the hat. I would not drink. I did not smoke. I took care of my body. My mom used to tell me your body is the temple of God. Do not harm it. Do not cut it. Do not scratch it. But I would fight. By the time I was 16 years old, I had been shot, stabbed, cut. Never ran from a fight. But I was prideful. I felt like no one could defeat me. And if they did, I'd come right back tomorrow. I lived off my pride. I even got so prideful to tell my mom that I would never see 30 years old. I would die in the street. Now this is how severe it is when you're angry as a young man. Not just that I would die. I told my mom that Satan had a penthouse on the bottom floor of hell with my name on it. I was hard. I never disrespected my mom. I never cursed her. I never disrespected my dad. But my mom sat in the ball. And she said, I will pray. And God is going to touch you one day. And you're going to change. You're not going to die in the street. Mm -hmm. So these real life stories that people tell you, you need to know that some people have a hard life. And God mm -hmm. can change you. Mm -hmm. You need to know that some people live and crawl in the dirt. And God will pick you up and wash you off and turn you into a totally different person. Amen. When we acknowledge God and give our lives to God and come to God, he changes us. We are no longer that same man or that same woman that we was before we met Christ. Thank God for that. Amen. I thank him every day because Amen. he changed me. Amen. I'm still big and angry and cranky. That's <laughs> <Ask> why. <laughs> but I can stop and tell people and still tell my wife, I'm sorry. I can humble myself now. And it's not just humble myself before God. Humble myself before people, everyday people. I don't have to fight back. I do not have to defend God. God has already taken care of all of it. I do not have to struggle or worry about my salvation. <clears throat> through, the Christ, through the blood of Jesus, I've already been covered. And each and every one of you in this room, you have been covered by the blood. You are no longer the person that you used to be. Third verse of Proverbs 29, 23. One's pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor. Again, our pride holds us from achieving the goals that Christ has set for us from achieving the goals that God has in store for us, from using the talents that God has given us. Not everybody's going to be a violin player. Not everybody is going to be able to talk to people and make them laugh. Not everybody's going to be able to motivate people. Some people are just going to have that quiet, soft, gentle voice and humbleness that uplifts other spirits. Some people are just going to be able to lift a person out of their grief when we lose our wives and our children. Some people are just able to sing and you, 
You, you, you listening to them, it, it changes your whole world. And you do not understand what just happened. God uses us in so many different ways. <clears throat> this is a prime example. I came to give the word this evening. But I looked out at you guys, and as you were coming in, I got to meet you, and I've already been blessed. I've been blessed just by your presence. Because I can humble myself before God and, and understand and feel the love that you give. <sighs> Matthew. Twenty-seven through thirty. All things are delivered unto me from my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but through the Father, and neither knoweth the man the Father save the Son, except the Son. And he whom serves serve the Son reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God says to come unto him. How many times have we found ourselves frustrated trying to get something done? How many times have we lost our temper because our spouse didn't move fast enough? I've been with Judy I mean, so I'm, and, and Mitch, and I'm sitting there shaking my head and thinking, all right, you guys can fight, I'm just going to leave the room. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It's okay when you do that. And I'm not throwing you under the bus. I'm not throwing you. Because I've been married 35 years, me and my wife fight too. Okay. <laughs> but come unto me, you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. How many times do we take that verse seriously? How many times do we get frustrated? And what we do, we fight even harder. We work even harder to fix the problem because we want to fix it. Our pride again. We want to get it done. How many times have you heard that 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 statement in your life? Mm -hmm. How many times you use it? Just get it done. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to stop, relax, listen, and let God speak to us. That's not always in words. Sometimes that's just in the depths of your soul. And that verse goes on to say, the next verse says, <clears throat> Come unto me who are that are labor and <clears throat> scar, labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. Everyone knows, we, we got a, a country community here. Everyone knows what a yoke is a yoke that was made for a cow to keep him in the fence. Big bulky thing. And then you had the yokes they used in oxen, poor plows, and, and did work in the fields. You look at a yoke as being a, a burden itself. But God says, take his yoke and learn of it. Take the time to take that burden, to read, to study, to simply pray. Sit alone in your house. Go out and sit in your yard. Ride around on the lawnmower, working on a car, sing a song to yourself. Take the time to welcome God into your heart. Do it humbly. Amen. You cannot do it with pride. God has no place to plant the seed if he's planted in pride. Your ground is not prepared. But if you're humble and you can push your own pride out the way, if you're humble and you can stop thinking about what you have to do tomorrow before the day is even over, if you humble yourself in God's will and learn of Him, His yoke will not be a burden, but a comfort. First Peter 5 and 6. Humble yourself therefore, therefore under the mighty hand of God 
so that the, at the proper time he may exalt you. I'll read it again. Humble yourself, therefore.